a lot going on in the cannabis space recently, or at the very least, the expectation that something will be going on from the USDEA review that could result in a lower risk rating for cannabis to the Safe Banking Act that could allow a lot of these producers to be banked in the U.S. and even companies that don't have huge exposure there have been benefiting that. Tilray is an example of this. It does have exposure in the U.S. in the form of CBD products, but they have that U.S. listing. And so in order to keep that, you've got to only be in nationally regulated places. Let's put all of this to Erwin Simon. He's the chair and CEO of Tilray. Thanks so much for being with me. Good morning. Great to see you. So you're a busy guy. You're consolidating. You, you know, you swallowed up Afria, Hexo. Now you're buying some uh, liquor brands. You know, let's put all of this in, together. Where, where are you taking Tilray? So when I got to Afria in 2018, 2019, we're a $50 million business, basically concentrated on recreational cannabis and some medical cannabis in Canada. You know, financially not the strongest. Today, you know, Tilray Brands, which was the merger between Afria and Tilray and Hexo, of course, you know, we're on a run rate to be a billion dollars. Step back and look at our Canadian business today. We have over 13% market share. Um, we're the largest in Canada in recreational, the second largest in medical cannabis. In the US, we've put together a good platform of beer, spirits, and food. And in Europe, we are medical cannabis and medical distribution. So Tilray today is well diversified, well positioned. And again, with you know legalization happening in the US, we are set to capitalize on that in a big way too. Let's talk about how that is and, and whether all this, these, this alcohol portfolio, is that sort of eventually, does that become a marijuana distribution? How, how should we think about so, that? So Amber, what I did want our shareholders to do is sit back, we all been waiting for legalization in the US. Now I want to make sure we are in a good business with good growth, with good income, with good EBITDA, but had adjacencies to cannabis upon legalization. You know, yesterday I visited the facility we own called Trust, which does, you know, cannabis drinks mm -hmm. in Canada. And I'm looking at that and sort of saying, wait now, just imagine if I could sell nationally in the US beer that didn't have alcohol, but was infused with THC, how big a business. So that's why you're buying these brands. So one of the reasons is I'm buying these brands too, because I think there's a big opportunity in the beer business. And I, my whole strategy is craft beer. How do you make it cooler? How do you sell more craft beer? You know, a lot going on in the beer industry. Um, so that's number one. But number two is this here, we set up the distribution, we set up the brands, and upon legalization one day, we will infuse these drinks with THC, CBD, but we'll have the distribution and we have the brands, you know, when and if legalization does happen. Any insight on timeline? You know these stocks, including Tilray, have been moving, just any little bit of news. So I think the news last week gives hope that the government will do something in regards to descheduling. I think what's gonna happen, and again, my opinion, medical cannabis will legalize first, and they'll leave it up to each of the states. What does that mean for you if medical cannabis so, legalizes? Good, good question, listen, we're the largest medical cannabis company in Europe, the second largest medical cannabis in the US, uh, in, in Canada. Canada. We know how to grow cannabis. We are GNP certified. So what it does for us will allow us to get into the medical cannabis on a you know global basis there. Um, do we buy something? But we're already set up in the US. So what it means for us is, hey, it'll give us an entry that we can go in the US. Today, we can't sell anything in cannabis in the US today because we trade on the NASDAQ, trade on and, you know Toronto Stock Exchange, and cannabis is not legal from a federal standpoint. But you step everywhere today <clears throat> on my way here, on every corner, I can smell cannabis. Yeah. I live in New York City. But isn't that part of the problem? Well, there's too many. There's too many. We're a country of oligopolies. There's too many brands. There's too many SKUs. And that will sort itself out. There's number one, there's too many brands. Only 50% of the market today is, is serviced by, you know, legal market. The mm -hmm. other 50% is still the illicit market. But the thing is, today, consumers want cannabis. And there's... You know, Amber, so much research out there today in regards to cannabis from a medical standpoint, whether it's cancer patients, whether it's epileptic, whether it's anxiety, whether it's sleep. So 
ultimately our government got to start listening and that's us you know to deschedule it and cannabis should be similar to what tylenol with codeine is because if not it's being bought today in an illicit market anyway and all these tax dollars are being lost i guess the point is you know you saw the, the canadian experience was one of so much fragmentation a very vibrant black market what's to say that's not going to happen in the u.s listen there's a very vibrant you know illicit market in the u.s today i think the problem is and I, you know, Canada did it right. They legalized it. You know, Canada today brings in like $550 million in tax dollars from the cannabis industry. We as a company, Tilray, we pay about $150 million in excise tax. But they gave out way too many licenses mm -hmm. and didn't manage the illicit market versus the legal market. The problem in the U.S. today, you know, the illicit market today is strong. And there's a lot of cannabis that's coming in from you know other markets that's cut with fentanyl. That's bad cannabis. And today, what Tilray goes through from a quality, from a regulatory, before we can sell it to the consumer, is very stringent. So you know what you're getting. You hinted at deals, Canada market, U.S. market, alcohol. Where are you most likely to strike? Listen. You know, when I started with a free, I built a company once called the Haines Celestial Group into a three and a half billion dollar yeah. consumer packaged goods in the natural organic food industry. You know, you come back and look what Tilray Brands is today. You know, we're a branded consumer packaged goods business looking to participate in the wellness industry. If cannabis doesn't legalize in the U.S., we're going to have to go bigger and bigger into spirits. We're going to have to go bigger and bigger in beer. And, you know, listen, it's a big category, the beer and spirits industry. Legalization will happen one day. In the next year or two, legalization in U.S. or in Canada has happened, okay? The market will grow here to a $10 billion retail, so we can get a lot of share. And in Europe, cannabis, you know, will continue to legalize in the medical area. I think Germany over the next year or two legalizes, which is your biggest market in Europe. Path to profitability, sustainable profitability. Listen, we're on the way there now. Um, from an EBITDA standpoint, from a free cash flow standpoint. You know, we have one of the strongest balance sheets. We're diversified from a company. We're not dependent on just on cannabis. Um, so I come back and sort of say, hey, Tilray is in a great place, even if cannabis does not legalize, you know, in the U.S. We are well, well positioned. Canopy growth's on the mat right now. What do you think of that? Listen, I come back and those that live in glass houses don't throw rocks, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think... Could you buy them? Listen, I think we are in a great position today in the Canadian market. You know, Afria, Tilray, so Hexo, Redican. We really don't need them. For us to grow today... At some is, point, though, you must look at this and think... Listen, at some point you not? come back and sort of say, you know, consolidation is good as long as you're going to get something for it. Is it synergies? Is it savings? Is it share? Is it taking costs out? But we are well positioned today without doing any more acquisitions in the Canadian market. And I come back and sort of say, hey, I love the spirits and beer industry in the U.S. I think there is tremendous opportunity in the craft beer business there's for us. There's more deals there's available. There's a lot more deals available. And there's a lot of deals in Europe in regards to the medical cannabis industry and the medical you know, distribution business in Europe. How's the um, how, how's the balance sheet looking to, to support those kind of deals? And might you want to take advantage of your recent rally in share price? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm about doing good deals for shareholders that are accretive. And, you know, in my lifetime, I've probably done over 75, you know, deals, you know, my prior company and now with Tilray. Um, listen, we're going to grow organically. We're going to grow with new innovation. We're going to grow with acquisitions and we're going to grow going into new companies. But got to do deals that are good for the overall company. And I think so far, you know, listen, you heard what I said at the beginning. We are a $50 million business in 2018, 2019. We're on a run rate to a billion. Some of that came from organic growth. The majority of came from acquisitions, but you know, with Hexo, we we you know took over Hexo last year. You know, we got about forty million dollars of EBITDA last year from them. We'll get about thirty million dollars of synergies and saving. Mm. Canadian market needs more consolidation, whether it'll be us or someone else. But there needs to be more consolidation. Here. I, I'm running out of time, but just what's the investor support like these days? You meet with investors? Are they 
generally getting more interested because, you know, yep. I imagine the doors were closed. Everybody's, everyone. you know, listen, a lot of money was lost in the cannabis world yeah. and a lot, of, a lot of money. And I go back and look at the amount of money spent on infrastructure, you know, in previous managements and building out these facilities, crazy dollars, okay? But I think, you know, everybody knows cannabis is going to be big. You know, I have four kids. I know what they're doing in regards to cannabis versus, you know, alcohol sometime, right. okay? So I come back and I understand some of the medical benefits. Everybody realized cannabis is big. A lot of shareholders got hurt, so they're afraid to jump back in. But if you look at, you know, in regards to our volume, we trade some days between 50, 80 million shares a day. That's more than Apple. That's more than, you know, Tesla. You come back and, and Canopy trade like 125 million shares yesterday. There's crazy numbers. So there's a lot of interest in regards to, you know, investors want to be into this category. But the big thing is this here. Investors can invest in Tilray that you know, institutional investors, because we do not participate in cannabis in the US, so legally they can. And I think that's the big thing is, where can you deploy your money? Mm. And you know, stocks are cheap in my opinion right now, and I think investors see something happening in regards to descheduling. And I think you know, investors see what Tilray is doing now, not dependent upon legalization in the US, you know, are jumping into these stocks. All right. We got